Here we go. And uh, if you need anything, please open up your mic because I'm going to just talk. I can't see you on this screen. Um, I'm just going to get going and we're going to talk. So Tony, let me know if there's anything that needs to happen, any change that needs to happen. So today we're talking, we're going to talk about power, of the, and I'm going to use the terms that we have heard in the past, the power of, I need to go the other way, other way, there we go, <clears throat> the law of attraction. So the law of attraction is not, it was not discovered by the secret, it was not discovered by um, the things of the world, it was discovered, it's, it's the kingdom of God, it's the way that the king runs everything. Everything is about being uh, attractive, drawing things to you. Some of, some of us, uh, I grew up with rejection and I knew that the thing that needed to break for me to be accepted or to be uh, uh, someone that's successful, I needed to know how to move and operate in attraction, how to draw things, draw people, draw opportunities to me. So we, we're gonna walk in that, the power of attraction. The power of faith is the law of attraction. So when you, when you know you're a person of faith, you have faith in, you're dreaming of, you're believing in, if you are in a situation where you're doubting and you're fearful, it is a breakdown of the traction. You cannot be attractive and doubtful. You cannot be attractive and negative. You have to actually tap into the law of attraction. You'll get more deals when you understand that just being a person of faith makes you more attractive. There's something about that the, 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 the vibrations or the manifestation of the spirit that's on your life when you are under the, the power of faith. Attraction is this, the word is, the word attraction means to act the power or property of attracting to you. Now, I want you to know in sales, you have to be attractive. Anybody that's, that's you've, you've, we've, if you've encountered someone who goes, who they have a good product, but they themselves is, is not, a, not attractive. I'm not talking about physically attractive. I'm not talking about they, but maybe they, they, they don't carry themselves in the right way. They're negative. They're not positive. That makes you not want to do <clears throat> makes you not want to do business with them because there's an attraction issue. We want to make sure that we remove anything in our lives that makes us unattractive, that takes away from the message that we have, that takes away from the product that we want to sell. We want to make sure that that's not attractive. I was um, in one of our interviews. I can't go into that. That's, I have to give permission. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> I want you to know faith attracts. It's important that you know faith is about pulling things to you not just creating things, but making things. It's like a, the center of the universe. Faith, it draws things to you. And so you want to know that God has given you faith. faith. The next thing is you have to understand the difference between faith and doubt. Doubt is the power. The power of doubt is the power of attrition, moving things from you. It's pushing things. It's, it's moving things away from you. And sometimes we have grown up in a certain environment, certain system, and we don't know that our system, the way our, our way of being, our way of doing things is immediately a, 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 a repelling and it pushes things away. So we need to know and how to shift that and starts with two, two simple things, the power of faith and the power of doubt. Faith draws to me, doubt moves things from me. So power of faith is the attraction. The power of doubt is attrition. Attrition is this word, a reduction or in or decrease in numbers, size, or strength, a wearing down. Uh, we have we have things happening in our society right now, uh, even according to the word of knowledge that was the prophetic word that was given just moments ago, uh, is that there are things that are that are reducing, things that are decreasing, decreasing in number, decreasing in size, decreasing in strength. If that's attrition, that means that there's some atmosphere. That is not right. It's not an attractive atmosphere. It's not a right atmosphere. It's now repelling. It's breaking apart and it's dividing. I want you to know worry and worry separates and divides. So we have to make sure that we're not people of worry and, 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 and doubt and fear. We have to make sure that those are, the, the, those are very big things that we're going to get out of our lives. Uh, this week, we're going, to, we're going to pay attention. We're going to be aware. We're going to be aware of our ability uh, our ability, we're going to be aware of our faith, where we have faith and where we don't have faith. Uh, whether or not you get news and you go, oh man, that's terrible news. It's going to be so bad. That's the attraction of doubt. That's the attrition, right? Doubt is attrition. So that's going to now cause things to go away from you. So I want you to be sensitive. When, when circumstances come, are you immediately moving into doubt? Or are you immediately moving into confidence? You're immediately moving into uh, 
faith, this is going to turn around. This is going to turn around. The best is yet to come. I'm not going to allow doom to come in here. So that's important that you don't allow doom. You allow hope. You allow, you allow excitement, you allow joy, you allow, allow enthusiasm. Why do I keep getting you enthused? Because enthusiasm is attractive. Smiling is attractive. Hope is attractive. You know, you, well, last year, two years ago, they've been, they've been corporations were talking about whether or not they should get rid of smile and tell everybody no more smiling in, in the corporations. I thought that's the most ridiculous thing. Now, immediately, you're going to be, you're going to develop attrition. They say, well, most, most countries are, are not comfortable with smiling. Well, that that America is, is winning in a certain way because we do have a smile. We have an economic strength and we can't go into this thing where we lose our smile, we lose our attraction for the sake of attracting something that we really don't want to retain. So we want to make sure that we are aware. Be aware this week. Pay attention to your intellect. Pay attention to your spirit. Pay attention to your physical, your physical posture. The higher you are in your awareness, the more you understand where you are. Most people just pay attention to what's uncomfortable. Oh, it's hot in here. Oh, it's cold in here. It's a hot day. You know, it's really interesting when we meet someone in the elevator or we meet someone in, in the stores. The first thing we do is we talk about how, dis, how, how, un, how the weather is. Why? It's because we're looking at the lowest level of awareness. The lowest level of awareness is all physical. It's not intellectual. And so when you're building relationship or you're trying to do something, you don't go right into the intellect, you go into the very basics. What do you do? What do you like to do? And that's now just first level interaction of anything. It's the animalistic. It's the, it's the very primal nature. You talk about the very primal things. Well, and you have to know when you're going into it, even in, in sales or your digital marketing, uh, the first conversation you need to have is a very primal conversation. Sometimes we start with the, with the intellectual conversation. We want to talk about the, you know, this and this is what it's going to do. But most people want to know what's, what's this going to do for my lifestyle, which is very physical, very basic, very low level. And so when you're even looking at influencers, you're looking at, okay, so what do I get out of this? What's it going to do for my finances? What is it going to do? But in the meantime, I have to work on your intellect and I have to work on your spiritual awareness, your heightened senses. I need to work on that in order to really bring you to a higher place. And so uh, the first level is going to be physical. It's going to be, yes, yes, I, I'm cold, I'm hot, I'm hungry, I, I feel safe, I don't feel safe. That's all on the Maslow's uh, pyramid. But I want you to get this. In order to really take advantage of the opportunities that are coming your way, you have to be, you have to increase in your awareness. Now, the, the law of attraction and the law of attrition are based upon your awareness. What are you aware of? When, you, when you're aware of, of, of how to bring change to something, uh, when you're aware of how to bring change to something, then it's, it causes you to have an ability there, and then you don't have a nervousness when, when that, that change is needed. So if um, someone drops, you know, so we, my wife and I, we were watching this, we were watching this, we were watching these videos, stayed up late watching these videos of these, these parents, and it, I don't know if I like it, but I did watch it. It was really kind of funny because it's psycho psychologically interesting. Um, these parents were pretending that they got poo poo on little kids and they were giving them toilet paper. It's just the most awful thing. I need to see faces right now, but I can't, I can't see faces. I don't but the thing is, is, and then these kids were just responding and they don't, they're not, they're used to the parents taking it off of them. They're not used to having, and it's just really chocolate. It's, it's just like Nutella or chocolate or whatever, peanut butter. And they're like, ah, because their awareness of how to remove it. One little girl, she goes, we need someone to help us because her awareness of actually fixing the situation is not there because she's so used to working at a very low level in that interaction is mama, come help me. Papa, come help me. Someone come help me. But the parents, the more you grow in your intellect, the more you grow in your, your spirituality, you should be made aware of how to fix things at levels that other people don't know how to fix things. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I, I don't, I can't see you. I'm going to see if I can get at least some participation marks. I, Michael, okay, there we go. Um, so I want you to, I want you to know that that you have to be in a position, in a situation where we can, uh, where we can, where we have to know that the we are aware of more. We're aware of more. I'm just trying to see faces here. Sorry. So it's, the more we are aware, I'm, I'm, that's going to be in my way. The more we are aware, the more we're likely to interact with that. The less likely we're going to be in doubt and fear. 
Doubt and fear come when you don't know what to do, when you don't know what the circumstance is calling for you to do. So you move into doubt, you move into fear because you have no idea how to interact with it. But the more you know, the more aware you are, the more you intellect you are. So you have to grow from, if, if, from being just a physically interacted person to being an inter intelligent person. Uh, your intellect needs to increase and then your spirituality needs to increase. I know when I hear certain things, people say, oh, this is terrible. I know how to interact with it in the spirit level. I know how to interact with it in the intellectual level, intellectual level, and I know how to interact with it in the physical level. If they only know how to interact with it with the physical and the intellectual level, they will respond to it differently than when I hear it. When I hear it, I know how to handle it in the spirit. The, my higher awareness is spirit. The highest awareness is spiritual. I know how to interact, interact with it in the spirit. I know how to interact with it with my intellect. I know how to interact with my physical. What we've tried to do in Christianity is we tried to say, I'm spiritual, so I know how to interact with these things. So you may pray about them, but you don't know how to have your intellect involved to where you know the wisdom that it takes to actually bring change. So this is what the influencers is changing. We're not just going to know how to do, how to go in prayer and pray and be in the spirit and see and fall out. And that's not the key. The key is, is we do have the higher. So we're going to go there first. But we still have people who have, who have prayer ability. They have ability to hear and they still have anxiety. Why? It's because intellectually, they don't know what to do. They don't know the steps to take. So we have people who are high level in their awareness of the things of the spirit, but they're low level in the awareness of the things of the intellect. So it then dumbs them down and they have a huge gap between the physical need and the spiritual desire. That's just like dreaming. That's just like fantasy. Fantasy is a high level spiritual. It's like, I can see these possibilities, but I don't know how to take the physical to the spiritual. And when a lot of you, when you interviewed, you say, I see these things, but I don't know the steps to do. I don't know the steps to take. What we're really working on is giving you an intellect that matches your sight, the intellect that matches your vision and the physical ability to interact with it until you increase and grow it. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And what it takes to do it, you have to convert these things to, to move from physical to intellect to spiritual. It's all a conversion of energy. It takes another level of energy to physically pick up stuff and to go to intellect. I know people think, well, I work really hard. It's digging ditches. I work really hard. But you have to know that when you use brain power, it's more energetic than it is just physically. Physically, you can, you can just keep shoveling, keep shoveling, keep shoveling, and you're not activating your brain, which means you're not actually learning how to interact with the world at a higher level. So we've got to get you out of just physically interaction, and we have to get you into a place where you're, you're intellectually interacting with the world. You're more aware of how to handle things. We have people that are doing things right now in the earth, on the streets, and they, because they don't know how to go to intellect and they don't know how to go to spirit, they are actually only interacting physically. So I'm going to go and walk with a banner. I'm going to go and hit things, break things, because their intellect has not given them the awareness of how things really change. Things change in a different way than just breaking windows. Things change in a different way than just giving, you know, rants and raves. Things change when intellect and spirituality come together. We're dreaming of the same things, and now we know how to intellectually get to those places. Is there anybody with me? I can't hear you, see you, but I want to just give you, I want you to give me something. Anybody with me? You got me? You hear? So I want you to know we need to learn how to use our energy, which energy that we have is doubt. Doubt is an energy. Have you ever walked into a room where someone has just been worrying and worrying and worrying, but you came out of a good day, a good meeting, all of a sudden you walk in, it's like, Wow, what's going on here? There's something really odd and funky here. That's because there is an energy. There's an energy to worry. There's an energy to doubt. There's an energy. And I want you to know, the greater your energy of doubt, worry, and fear, the more physical you will be. It actually will begin to break down your physical body. You'll start to feel more tired. You'll start to feel more sickly. You'll start to feel more inadequate to, to actually bring about change. But when you move the energy into hope and joy and excitement and peace and things are going to turn, that energy then begins to raise you up in this arrow and you go from like, oh man, physically, I don't know what to do to intellect. Intellect goes, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do this. 
then it goes to spirit. You know, I can see it turning out for the good. Not just that I'm going to turn it around, but it's going to turn around for my good. This is going to be absolutely amazing. I'm going to be changed and transformed by this, and my life is going to be changed. So when we know that the, the our, our awareness is key, I don't know if I can tell you enough. I don't know if I I, I don't know how to how to how to get this to you other than um, the 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 money that you made in the last ten years, five years. Is, is simply based upon the level of awareness you have. Uh, if the money that you missed out making is based upon the awareness that you have. Uh, the higher levels of awareness, as I talked last week, the Elon Musk, the Elon Musk, the, uh, these, uh, these men, uh, you know, Bill Gates, these men believe that they have a greater level of an intellectual awareness that taps them up to the spiritual awareness where they can think of, let's go to Mars, or they can think of, even though they just, you know, I run a software company, I can come up with a, uh, you know, a, 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 a new kind of food or a new kind of vaccine, right? That, that, that awareness, their intellect has given them such an awareness of how the world works that they believe that they can tap into the spirit. But what if you and I really grow in our intellect and then we allow the spirit become to, to engage that intellect? The spirit of God wants to engage your intellect, not just engage your physical most of us allow God to engage our physical. I can feel God. I felt that. I did that. Now, that's great. We should all have God interact with our physical. But the greatest level of God wanting working, the spirit wanting to work with you, is to make you more intellectually aware of the things that you can't see and the things that you can't hear and the things that you don't understand. I'm telling you, oh, this is cool. This chair has a bounce in it. I'm telling you, this is important that you get this, is that you realize that God's trying to give you such intellect. God is the smartest being there is. There is nobody smarter. You meet with the smartest, most intelligent being there is in, the, in, all, of, in all of the world, all of the universe. You meet with him every single day. Don't you think he has some, some higher level thoughts that he wants to give you about how the things are going on in this world? That's what I want us to dig into. That's what I want us to, to bridge into. So if you know that, that energy, that if you know the energy is a converter, your energy, the level of energy that you have in your intellect converts, is gonna convert something at that level. The level that you have of the spirituality is gonna convert something at that level. Now remember, we have to handle the gap of intellect and spirit versus you know spirit and physical because most people they don't believe that god is intellectual i remember when i wrote the book becoming a pioneer of success the biggest challenge that i had from my publisher is that they didn't believe that god worked with the soul the soul is your thoughts your feelings your intellect your mind right your your the, the, that they, they said no they really wanted to see that god was spiritual and god was physical and that's the that's the reason that christians don't lead the way in most things is because God can be spiritual and God can be physical by, by taking care of my needs. But how come God can't be intellectual? How come God can't be a great brain that's telling me and teaching me and training me and guiding me? That's when we're gonna win. When we allow God to be the greatest teacher there is, and when we have that, we're operating at a high, the highest level of awareness because we are meeting and gathering information from the greatest brain and greatest, smartest intellectual person there is, which is God himself. So we have to know that you're going to convert. You're going to convert in this season. You're going to convert energy. You're going to convert your energy into intellect. You're going to convert your energy into spirituality. It's like fire. If you, if you in certain set settings, you know, some of you came, you, I met you with my friend, Georgian. Georgian loves to pray fire, fire. Fire, because fire converts. We saw that last week in thermodynamics. Fire converts. Fire is a converter. It doesn't allow anything that it touches to stay the same. Oh, I want more fire. I don't want anything to stay the same after it interacted with me. I want fire. That fire converts it to whatever I intend it to be. So when you know fire converts, you understand this because you've done it. You've used it. Ice turns into water when you add some, some, temp, some heat to it. And when you add more heat temperature to it, you let that temperature stay there, it turns into vapor and that fire converts H2O, it converts it from ice, water, vapor, in, in, in onwards, mist, whatever it may be. So I want you to know it doesn't allow it to stay the same. Fire never interacts and keeps anything at its own, at its, at its state. Now the state change that's happening here is dynamic. It's super powerful. And the reason is, is because uh, this, the, the, the more energy that's added to something, the more 
a molecule moves. So the more energy you add from physical, you can be physical and not move. You can be physical and just stay steady and just be like, okay, yeah, whatever. And then, but the more you move, if you want to lose weight, you got to move. If you want to, if you want to, you want to get up and make something, you got to move. So that now is converting your energy. You start to, you start to take your cells from a place of slow moving because your cells are never in the place of inertia. They're never at complete rest, but they're in slow moving. Once you start to move them more, it starts to create that temperature, that rise in temperature. You start to feel it in your skin. Your physical start to feel it. The more you move, then, then the fact is, is you become more intellectually aware. It's amazing that when you are running or when you're doing exercises, how much your awareness opens. You open because you're activating things and you're activating adrenaline, you're activating uh, you know, your, your endorphins, you're activating, and you're opening yourself up to more awareness. So whether you know it or not, the more you move, the more intellectually aware you're becoming because you open up to gather more information. You may not use any of that information. I study while I work out because it allows me to retain more because my eye, I'm, I'm, I'm dilated in every way because I'm working out and my, my molecules are moving faster and my, my, I'm, I'm, I'm literally vibrating at a different level in my body that, that is bringing an intellectual inter interaction. Then I do a lot and, and then you can do that in the spirit. The higher you go, the more spiritual you become. So you have to know that the more something moves, the more heat that's added to it, the more it moves, the more it vibrates, at that point, it, it's now converting at a higher level. So you have to understand, uh, I, I blocked myself here. I miss my TV. You have to understand <clears throat> that energy attracts and energy repels matter. Energy attracts and energy repels matter. So when you have energy that is doubtful, it's, it's repelling. When you have energy that's attracting, it's drawn to you. The language of the spirit is vibration. So when God says, let there be light, he didn't just go, let there be light. It wasn't, it wasn't a verbal conversation. It was a, the Hebrew word is actually more of a breath. It's a he, he. So when God said, let there be light, he said, he. And it really is a manifestation of light be, that, that word, but it's a vibration the spirit language is a vibration. It moves things. So if you get a really powerful singer, you used to see the commercial, really powerful singer, she goes, ah, and she's releasing that, and it breaks the, it breaks the glass. That is the vibration. That's not the, her voice. It's the vibration of the sound that's being made. When God releases a sound, when God releases a vibration, it is, it is a power of attracting or power of repelling. You need to know that because the faster something moves, the greater the movement, the more spiritual it is. So the, it's when you get into a spiritual place in your prayer, you feel the heat. You're like, oh, I feel so hot, it's so much heat. Why? It's because you're in a higher place in the spirit. It's interacting with your physical, vibrating like this. It's now moving all parts of you. You're moving at a new level. That's why cancer can dissolve because we got that moving at a level that it couldn't hold. It couldn't sustain because cancer needs it to go into an, a repelling into a, a the 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 imp, the, the um, empathy, uh, yeah, empathy, no, uh, tropy, entropy, entropy. So, he, but that turning in on itself. So we need to know that God doesn't want anything turning in on itself. So His words are life. His words are faith. His words of hope. So you have to know that you're interacting with things with your words. So when you start to speak, this door is going to open to me. Guess what happens? That door. Woo, or someone, that door starts to vibrate. That door starts to move. It starts to actually make room for you. It starts to prepare. If you say no doors are opening for me, it starts to slow down. The doors start to slow down. The opportunities start to slow down. You have to change how you speak to where you're heading because that's what causes it to rise to where you're going. In order for it to be converted to what you need it to be, you need to know that your words are, you don't have to be in the room with it. You can speak it just like the woman who says, ah, and across the room, it breaks the, it breaks the, it breaks the, the glass is because it is the power of vibration. And so when you start to speak, you have to know that you're speaking in a way that's gonna bring about doors. So last month, Tony was telling us every single, just about every, every time I talk to him, I'm about to, I'm gonna break this, I'm going for this, I'm going for this. You know what he was doing? He was creating attractive opportunities 
opportunities were now being attracted because he was vibrating at a certain level, a certain level of faith, a certain level of confidence, a certain level of energy. And as he's vibrating at that level, everything he's speaking at is starting to resonate at that level. Oh, come on, somebody. It's starting to resonate at that level. And then at the time you get it so tuned where you're vibrating at that level in the sense that you have the spiritual energy and spiritual awareness of what it can be. And you're speaking to it and you're calling it to be that. At the moment it goes, boom, and it locks in. That's when the door is open. So when you go, I have, the, I have a win this week. It's because you have been believing, trusting, expecting, declaring it. And when that win happens, it happens because you were able to get in alignment with the thing that was coming, that you wanted to come your way. You open the door. That's how God said, let there be light. That's how God said this and that, right? So that's how, so you are, are aligning opportunities to whatever your frequencies, whatever your vibration, whatever your spiritual condition, whatever your intellect is, you are manifesting that according to your, your ability to speak into. Now, now I want you to get this because you say, well, this doesn't sound like prayer. But I want you to see this because when Jesus went up to uh, a tree and the tree wasn't producing, he was in a system and it should be incre increasing for him. He said, may, uh, and, and he, he, the Bible says he responded to the tree and he said, bear no more fruit. It, that, that's, that's a proclamation. That's a declaration. That's a speaking forth. And the Bible says, whatever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. So now is that a prayer or is it a statement? It's both. That when you say this door is opening for me, God doesn't hear it as just some kind of, oh, you're just saying stuff. He goes, oh, that person, my son, my daughter's prayed. This door is opening to them. That door must open. It's not like, dear God, I'm going to ask you to open up a door. No, that door is opening for me. This opportunity is coming to me. This is going to be the blessing of my life. This is how I'm going to live my life. This, this, whatever, this house, this car, this, whatever it may be. When you say that, it's like saying, that's my prayer. I'm now commanding it to come to pass. When God said, I want light, he didn't say, I want light. I really want light to come. I want, no, he said, let there be light. That's that oh, he, that vibration made everything aligned to it because it was a commanding, authoritative, forceful, spoken conversation that was that's considered prayer in God's mind. He says, uh, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. And when you say to this mountain, be removed. So he's saying, he's saying, when you say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, that's prayer. Yes, that's what God says is prayer. When you say, get into the sea, that's prayer. When you say, go, come out of the sea and come to me, that's prayer. I want us to change the way we pray this week. I want you to start telling things to come to you and things that you don't want to come to you, start telling things to go from you. That's the power of what we're talking about. That's the power of prayer. Oh boy. So I want you to know you have the power to convert by the, the energy that you have within you of the Holy Spirit and of the power of God. So you're not physical and you're not just spiritual, but you're also intellectual. So God's going to give you, he's going to give you the ability to convert things and you're going to be able to see how they can change. And that's where the strategies come in. That's where the blueprints come in. That's where the schematics and the, 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 the ways of doing things come in is because you have this ability to hear from God, take from the spirit, come to the intellect and you go, in the intellect you go, it's changing now. It's changing right now. And this is the same power of converting water and converting these things. Uh, the difference between you and the lower level of the physical is, is like, it's, it's like a dog. Dog is an, or any animal, uh, they're not change agents. They don't know how to change things. You leave a, uh, you leave a couch like this with a dog that hasn't been trained. It hasn't had a, 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 an intelligent person train their intelligence to where they don't bite the couch. They'll end up destroying the couch. So you have to train their intelligence because naturally they don't know how to get into the place of that intelligence. So we are more than animals. We're not animals. We are greater than animals, but we have to know that we're going beyond just being animalistic where someone just says, sit, stand still, go over here, do that. That, that, that's simple. That's lower level intellect. Now that lower level intellect is, is needed when we have animalistic nature and we don't have the ability to take God's intellectual spirituality and let him train us also there. So we can be trained from the physical or we can be trained from the spiritual, but it all has to come to that middle ground of the intellect. We have to know how to interact. Why? Because a dog doesn't say you never, well, you may, may, you may have a dog that you, you train to know how to sit in your your, your your couch, but the realization 
is you have to train them. Dogs don't know what to do with the couch. A dog can't come into the living room and go, you know, I really like the couch over there and I want the couch this to go over here because they don't have that ability to intellect to make decisions, to, to pull from the invisible to imagine what it could be. They don't have that ability, but you have to, you have that ability to go into a room and go, you know what, I really like that couch over here. And what are you doing when you do that? You're actually now tapping into the greater awareness of what's possibility, what's the possible thing. And you go, I think I can move that couch over there. Then you start to ask yourself this question, intellectually, do I have the ability to move that couch? Yeah, I can do that. And even if it's too big for me, I can call a couple of people over. Now you're interacting with these levels, the higher levels, and you're pulling in intellect and you're moving in ways that you can actually now bring about change. Now imagine if you're able to bring about change at this point where you go, now I'm gonna say, this changes, this changes, this changes. Let light be, tree don't grow anymore or tree grow, whatever it is, you're now able to speak because you have the same intellect that is able to look at that couch and go, that couch is better over here. There's some things in your life you've been tolerating and waiting for God to, to do, but the realization is you're not praying. I'm not saying you're not praying about it. I'm saying you're not praying. You're not praying in the way that the Bible says that if you, if you, uh, if you say to the mountain, uh, if you say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, then it will be done. That's what a prayer I'm talking about. When you say to it and it's gonna be done, that's what we're gonna do this week. We're gonna exercise our ability to say, this is gonna be, and this is the way it's gonna be. What if it doesn't happen this week? Uh, what's, what's gonna happen this week, Tracy? Coach Tracy, I want you to know this. If it doesn't happen this week, it doesn't mean it's not happening. It could be that the vibration is starting at a very ice level. Ice, the reason water becomes ice is because it's moving at such a slow level, slow vibrations, slow vibration. That means you have to have more heat to convert it. So if it didn't happen the first week, guess what? It needs more heat because the second week you get it moving. Okay, now it's starting to move. Woo, now, now then maybe it didn't happen the second week and then you go, oh man, it does, that stuff doesn't work. This stuff, this is, a, this is all that stuff, that stuff that they talk about that stuff. And then you stop converting it. And then it goes back to ice because it's cold it doesn't have heat doesn't have energy and then i then you come back next week and you go come on did we did you speak to it you did you talk to did you tell it what to do no but i'm going to do it this week and then you get it going again well we we now have to go and use that same energy to get it back to that place but then we speak another week and then we go another week and then we go another week and the next thing you know the thing's moving so fast that it converts to another frame another form Come on, I, this is good stuff, y'all. And then, then, it, then, it, then it now is now it's no longer the ice. It's now it's water, and it's moving differently. And I start to see change. I start to see it, but it's not the absolute change that I want. That means if I see a little bit of change, it's the evidence that I need to keep on moving it. Because what you're doing more than what you're just waiting for God to bring something to you. If you realize that prayer is more about converting things to you than bringing things to you, converting and attracting things to you, then God just saying, here's my, here, here's, here's the blessing. Here's, here's what you want. If you realize it's more about God giving you his ability to conform things, to confront things, to transform things, then when you say, let there be light, when you say, let there be light, I pray for things. I pray for a lot of things over and over and over, praying, praying, fasting, believing. But then when I started to say, you know what, I'm tired. I'm, I'm just really frustrated with this. I'm done. This is going to change now. Wow. That's when it changed. It didn't change when I still am mullering. Is that a word, mullering? It, it, whatever. The, I'm, yeah, that, no, it, it's when I'm, when I'm like, this is changing now. I need this to change right now. Talk, talk, tell me if that's ever happened to you where you felt like this is changing right now. This is changing. I'm not doing this another day. This is turning around. Say something in the chat if that's happened to you. Because the realization is that's where you go, this changes now. Guess what you did? Then you really started praying. Then you really start praying. I think we spend most of our time in communion. And that's great. But that's building a relationship with me and God. Or we go into God and we say, God, will you do it? When you, God, will you do it? God, God's saying, listen, I made you my representation. I made you look like me. And I need people who look like me, walk like me, possess me to go in the marketplace. I don't want us just to pursue miracles for the sake of having miracles. 
We're here to change the marketplace. We're here to change the way the world really works. We're here to change the way that government works, change the way education works. We're here to change in, uh, immediate. We're here to change it. But that's going to be done because we look at something, we go, there's a better way. I'm aware of something better. How many of you are aware of something better? You're aware of something better. You're aware of a better way of living. You're aware of a better car. If you don't have, if you don't have a, a dream car that you're looking at, then you're not, then you need to be, you need to be aware that there's a better car for you. You need to be aware that there's a better house. I, in the days to come, you know, Neela, uh, I don't know if she's on today, can't see anybody, but uh, she's really dynamic in vision boards. We got to do a vision board because you need to heighten your awareness of what's possible. I know it's a physical thing. We're going to look at cars, we're going to look at homes, we're going to look at these things. But the realization is we look at those things because it challenges us intellectually and it challenges us spiritually to get a greater awareness in order to capture it. Because until I can convert it to the energy that matches my desire, it will stay far from me. But I got to convert it. I've got to use my energy. I've got to increase in my energy to make that thing change. Yes, I want you to know this. I can't go on all this one. We need to know that God wants you to bring about change. Now, we'll talk to you about this story. I'll come through all of that. I want to finish off with questions. I want to, I'll come, we'll come back to that next week. We can't finish that off. But I want, I want you to understand, I want this week, let's convert some stuff. How many of you have, I'm back to seeing you. How many of you have something that you're going to speak to this week? You are just, you're not going to let it stay this way anymore. It's changing this week. You're about, it's at least going to start a little bit of a move. And I want you to get that because you have to understand it's converting to your level of energy. So if you have doubt energy, guess what it's going to convert to? It's going to convert to your doubt. If you have positive, upbeat, excited, full of faith energy, guess what it's converting to? It's going to convert. Now that happens without you even speaking to it. Things will begin to be attracted to you just because you are full of energy. I, I love being around Jeff. I, I think Jeff, you picked me up from the airport once when I was in, in, uh, in uh, San Diego, right? You picked me up once. I love being around Jeff. I was so excited when he wanted to be part of this program because Jeff is energy. He is like, he's full on like, woo, something about to happen, y'all. He's full on energy. Look at him, look at him. Jeff is full on energy, energy. And I was like, yes, we need energy like that. And that's what we need. And you need to know your family's going to think you weird, you're weird when you come up with this positive energy and now your faith energy. And you're not just faithing it, naming it, claiming that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about living in the way that God lives. God's completely so aware that there's a possibility of a new thing in every circumstance that he never allows doubt. If you can't doubt if you know how to fix everything. Come on, somebody. I want you to know you know how to fix everything because the one that is the smartest is on your side. He's with you. He's walking with you. He's strengthening you. And not now, last week, you learned how to hear him. Last week, you learned how to see. This week, we're going to learn how to convert. I know Jeff's energy is like, come on, Jeff is like brings it. And I love the videos that he does in, in, in the, in, in the uh, influencers group on Facebook. I love it because I'm like, yes, give it to me. Give it to me, Jeff. Give it to me because he's going to bring it. And his coaching system is going to be dynamic because people are just going to wake up going, I get to see Jeff. Let's go. I get to work with Jeff because that's the power of converting. And what he does is his energy is at such a level, whoever is around him has to come to that level. Same with, you know, a good friend of mine, he works with Colin. Colin, I love being around Colin because no matter what, Colin's like, let's go! It's like constantly, oh, let's go! And it's like, it's like really like just full on high level energy. But guess what? When you're around that, you can't go, I don't wanna go. You have to go because the energy pulls you right into the let's go. 